The big issue in health systems in gender has to do with post-conflict reconstruction. Because with the end of war, we are having so many people attempting to rebuild the health system, and it's very important that they look at gender issues. There's going to be an increasing push towards universal health coverage. Critical to universal health coverage is close to community providers who are a critical interface between neglected rural communities and the health system. And we need to take a gender lens when we analyse and understand how to support, motivate, retain and empower that critical group who are often female, although it varies across different contexts, but being embedded and part of the communities that they serve means that they have insights into how gender roles and relations play out within different households and different communities to affect vulnerability to ill health and ability to access services. And just to add on to what Sarah said, I think post-conflict in fragile contexts, close to community providers are really important. They've been really important, for example, in the response to Ebola. They'll be really important in terms of rebuilding trust between communities and health systems. Yeah, community health workers are a really important component of the human, um, human resource uh, group within health, but it's also really important to look about look at human resources as a whole in relation to gender and and look at it with a gender lens because just as community health workers tend to be predominantly female in many contexts the gender distribution of the workforce is quite skewed overall and you tend to have um, more males more at the top level uh, positions you know managers doctors and whatnot and it's women more at the lower tiers nurses, community health workers, um, and it really does, you know, impact upon the whole, you know, general workforce. Often a uh, woman will have key, key needs and, and experiences and, and things that need to be addressed within the health workforce, a, a lot related to their family responsibilities. They often have a double burden, you know, they work, they go and they work within the health work, workforce and they have to go work at home and health care you know, our childcare within the home. And it's very important that employment policies um, and guidance really recognizes this to support women and ensure that we can have a better, not so much of a skewed distribution of the workforce. I think um, gender is something that's vital for health systems and it needs to be seen in conjunction with other social determinants. So how, and a lot of our work in looking at specific contexts, is really looking at gender along with class, mm -hmm. um, education levels, rural, urban, caste, ethnicity, and looking at how that comes together as a mix to really change how social exclusion happens in the health system. And I think those social determinants, for instance, it might be some of the biggest risk factors women have face multiple barriers accessing health services, but there might be also risk factors that place men at particular risk as well. And I think that's a really important point, Asha, and as we have taken forward in RINGS, we've developed resources on intersectionality and looking at how gender interplays with other axes of vulnerability, as you said, disability, age, class, religion, and we need to understand how that plays out in different contexts and make sure that health systems respond appropriately. And that's about capturing the right evidence, mm -hmm. making that evidence accessible, and ensuring that it is acted on. Mm -hmm. And another really po important point that you picked up on is often when people think of gender, they think of women, women only, you know, issues or the women-centered issues, sexual reproductive mm -hmm. health, family planning, but that's not the case. Gender affects everybody, and there are gendered uh, behaviors that impact on our health, and gendered power relations that impact both women's and men's health, you know, their, be their behaviors, their health-seeking behaviors, their ability to access health care, and also thinking about how men are in included in, in certain domains that are typically seen as female dominated like sexual reproductive and health and family planning as major decision makers in many contexts it's important to bring them on on board and and look at their role and see how can we work work with both men and women to improve everybody's health well rings we have a very uh, 
very active a bit on social media and have quite a large social media platform. We have a website that you can visit and our website contains many, many um, useful and relevant resources, guidance documents, policy briefs, blogs, new, our newsletter. So it's all on there and we're very easily found online. Our Systems Global Conference and the forthcoming one in Vancouver in 2016 has a particular theme on gender equity, ethics and rights. So do think about that theme and look at the multiple resources we have on the RINGS website because there's, for example, different gender frameworks, thinking about gender and universal health coverage, gender and intersectionality, gender and M health. So lots of resources that will help you frame and think through and abstract. And there are always great ideas and opportunities to engage and we really it's through that interaction that we can affect change. So send us your ideas and we look forward to finding ways to work together.